You're tuned into It's Fighting Stupid Radio with Old Andy and Shaq Diesel. This week, I look back at UFC 126, Silver vs. Belfort, plus a preview of Strike Force, Fedor vs. Bigfoot. And now, your host, Eld Andy. What's up, Radio Land? Eld Andy here coming at you. This week, UFC 126, we take a look back at Belfort vs. Silva. We do a quick preview. Fedor vs. Bigfoot, Strike Force this weekend, East Rutherford, New Jersey. We also take a look at Gilbert Melendez. He recently re-upped with Strike Force. How this affects a lightweight Grand Prix. Speaking of title shots, let's talk John Jones versus Shogun Hua. It's fighting stupid radio. How you doing there, DDT? Top shelf. Top Pleasure shelf, to buddy. So, what'd you think of the fights? Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Right on. Shall we start at the uh, bottom and work our way to the top? Absolutely. All right. Let's get her going here. We had uh, Mike Pierce uh, defeated Kenny Robertson. I uh, unfortunately did not have not had did, the did I catch this one as either. No, but uh, you know from uh, from all the research and analysis going in, this is sort of what I'd heard was going to happen. Uh, though having better wrestling credentials on paper, Kenny Roberts wasn't quite as seasoned or as uh, or as well rounded as Mike Pierce. So uh, well, Mike Pierce is a beast. He's Fruity a, tattoos, but he's a beast. He's an animal. He stole around from John Fitch, and you know that uh, that is a little respect. Ragged all uh, Brock Larson. Yep. Getting her down and done in round two. Minnesota zone. All right, moving up the card, we had uh, Arizona Sun Devil Kyle Kingsbury taking on uh, Ricardo Romero, who uh, was sporting a uh, UFC Is My Life tattoo. No, he was not. That was the uh, other fruity little guy, the other Brazilian from Germany. Carlos Eduardo Rochero. UFC Is His Life. Ricardo Romero, he was sporting more of a gut. More of a gut, eh? Hey, a little potsy? A little potsy. A little potsy. He doesn't look like he's in the best shape. He looks like a Guido. Kingsbury and looked he, in good shape. And he got his. Kingsbury looked like he was on the juice. Not that that's, I'm saying he's on the juice. He looked like he was fucking jacked up more than usual. Yoked? Yeah, sure. Right on, right on. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's yeah. unfortunate for Ricardo Romero. Uh, you know, it looks like that, uh, you know. He's well, he was on a three-fight winning streak up until running into the Kingsbury there. So, you know, I think uh, we'll probably see him hang around for one more, one more fight and see how it goes. He's a tough, durable fighter, too, and he got fucked up. Well, you know, uh, AKA guys usually come strong. They seem to have a they seem to have a knack for winning. Moving up the card, iron sharpens iron. We have a man, Paul Taylor from England, taking on Gabe Gabezilla Rudiger. Uh, this fight was awesome. Gabe got his Rudiger. Oh, did he <laughs> ever? Did he ever? Yeah, yeah. He got a little free rhinoplasty there by uh, courtesy of a uh, head kick from Paul Taylor. And then some. God, he lit him up. He lit him up like a freaking Christmas tree. Yeah, that was a good time. Good time, great time. Good, this, good, can't, good anti wrestling, keeping it on the feet. Although I'm not, I'm not sure how good. I don't Rudiger think Rudiger is at pulling guys to the ground. I don't think Gabe Rudiger is really representative of the caliber of uh, UFC lightweight fighters. That that division no. is a Shark Tank. Um, this this has got to be his walking papers. Oh, he'll be getting a pink slip. No way around it. Uh, Paul Taylor, as always, brought it. He's an exciting fighter. Hard to go wrong with the Paul Taylor fight. Uh, look to him to move on, maybe to uh, maybe a rematch with Paul Kelly. Paul Kelly, uh, yeah. Kelly? Yeah. Why do you think? Uh, do you think Kelly will? Be what happened when he fought Sam Stout? Uh, split decision. Split decision. That Stout got the nod for, it, but uh, that'd be a fun fight to revisit. A lot of people, a lot of people in uh, in attendance had uh, Mr. Taylor winning the fight. Uh, Sam Stout has a tendency to get in these uh, these trilogies, eh? Yes. Yeah. And they, it's a usually a good thing. Awesome head kick finish. Awesome head kick finish. Check it out. There's. Uh, it's definitely worth watching. It's fightingstupid.blogspot.com. We'll have uh, we got that fight on there for you. Moving up the card. Not illegally or anything. Oh, who knows, man? It's a gray area. Speaking oh. of disappointments, uh, Demetrius Johnson took on uh, Kid Yamamoto. Yeah, is this fight a aired. Clinic of a fight. This fight aired on Facebook. Uh, streamed over the uh, website, the social networking website. Uh, stream. Uh, I think he had a bit of trouble loading it up at first, but uh, once they got the uh, volume situation handled. Uh, the stream performed pretty well. Mine was great. Um, uh, Kiki Yamamoto just couldn't handle Demetrius Johnson's pace and his wrestling, his ability to mix up the striking and uh, and the grappling. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it was tough. It was a tough debut. What did you think of that fight? He looked like a bullet and he shot like a bullet. Like, uh, he's lightning fast. Yeah, he's uh, definitely the most dangerous guy coming out of AMC Pancration. Yeah. He looks like uh, Houston Alexander's bastard child. With a chrome dome like that. With a chrome dome. Well, he he certainly isn't uh, 
He's not an intimidating looking gentleman by any stretch. Oh, of he's got enough forehead. Yeah, you have no, you uh, you wouldn't think twice about trying to mix it up with him, but you sure as hell would oh, uh, think. Geez. You wouldn't probably wouldn't think again afterwards. He shoots at your ankles. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, man. That guy's a beast. Uh, Kid Yamamoto, you know that's that's a uh, that's a tough break for him. Um, you know he's a very very popular fighter, and I think they were looking forward to using him uh, in their Japanese uh, uh, potential plans for later this year. Um, you know, that's, that's only one loss. You know, he's coming off a win over uh, Federico Lopez in Dream uh, back in, I think it was May. He's one in three. He's in one in three. last fights and fighting Joe Ward. But I think uh, he's the kind of guy who, uh, who they'll probably hold on to and just see how he, see how he pans out. Um, only paid him $15,000 on paper. On paper, but uh, there's plenty of stuff yeah, going on yeah, in the locker yeah, room. Yeah. Though, I mean, it wasn't a particularly exciting fight by any stretch, other than watching the uh, exemplary technique displayed by Mr. Johnson. Uh, the next fight, uh, this was the first fight that aired on the Spike TV portion of the card. Uh, this was Chad Money Mendez taking on Michihiro Omagawa. Uh, Michihiro Omagawa is uh, come riding high, coming off of uh, off of a good ride in Dream and in uh, Sengoku, if I recall. And uh, and uh, yeah, he basically got served. He but got his. He got his. Uh, other than a, other than a moment there where he was going for that, uh, what uh, the inverted straight armbar or it, a shoulder lock. It was an inverted. It was the same thing he got Cole Escobado with. Yeah, uh, inverted armbar. Yeah, same thing Frank Mir used on Pete Williams. Uh, no, isn't that? No, nope. one one's uh, one's over the shoulder like this, ah, and the other one is I, in the armpit. Yeah, your arm bends like that. Right, right. Okay, well I think he was going for the one in the armpit. Yeah. yeah, it was a great fight, great fight, uh, you know. They didn't show his usual head movement, a little hesitant because of the takedown. Well, I think uh, Chad Mendes, like, uh, even if Omegawa's head movement was perfect, I don't think he fought a guy that could move like that kid. That guy is fast. Oh, he hits like a brick, too. Those those last few shots he landed on him in the third round, there, the ground pound, ooh. I think this is another case, too, of where uh, the fact that he has really good wrestling and he's not hesitant to throw his hands makes both those skills more effective. You know, the fact that you have to be seriously uh, concerned about his striking makes his wrestling that much more effective, and the fact that you have to be so scared of his wrestling uh, makes his striking better. So you gotta love that. You have got to love that. The next fight uh, that went down on the uh, Spike TV portion of the card was Cowboy Cerrone versus Paul Telly Kelly. Uh, this fight had awesome written all over it, and uh, it turned out that way. Um, you know, uh, it went pretty much according to plan, with the exception of, I thought, uh, Paul Kelly did a lot better on the feet. Oh, well, allow me to retort. I agree. I thought he, I thought uh, Cerrone was going to get his. He was leaving his chin up, as he notoriously does, and was eating uh, big hooks and surprisingly uh, knees in the clinch. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, Kelly, uh, Paul Kelly fights hard. He fights like his life's on the line. And, I mean, his career may be on the line. Um, you know, um, he... He he's probably uh, he probably has gotten more pushed than he would have otherwise because he's a British fighter. But you know he's coming off. Uh, ooh, he's three and three and one in his last four with losses to Christmas Volkman uh, and Cowboy Cerrone. Oh, I guess actually sorry he's two and two. He defeated Matt Beach. Who's not bad? Pretty good fighter, Matt Beach. Or you could say he's uh, four and three. You know you can look at it a lots of different ways. Uh, surprisingly, it's it's pretty amazing how good of a grappler that Cerrone is. His guard is awesome. And, and, and even for his top game there, like, uh, whew. Yeah, you got to respect. You have got to respect Cowboy way he, The way he handled Kelly, like, instantly when it hit the ground. And uh, the stuff he was doing to uh, uh, Henderson the first time around. He's definitely going to have to shore up that... Uh, that defense issue, though, he, he, does, he gets hit. He gets Ooh. hit a lot in his fights, and there are some absolute killers in that division. You know, if Gray Maynard hits him like that, fucking over and out. BJ Penn hits you like that, it's over and out. Frankie Edgar, if he hits you five times like that, it's over and out. You know, it's uh, it's definitely uh, it's a it's a weakness, it's a liability. It needs to get shored up. But I mean, he's a, he's probably the most exciting fighter on the card. Uh, moving up the card. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You know, we got too many cooks in the goddamn kitchen here. Moving up the card, this is the first card to air on the pay-per-view as Miguel Angel Torres took on Antonio Banuelos. Uh, Miguel Torres, uh, you know, he didn't fight in his usual all-out uh, Mexican cyclone style, but uh, he, he exhibited a patient, measured game plan, popped that jab, 
Uh, he landed, I think, 80 strikes as compared to Buenuelos' 10. Uh, you know, pretty one-sided. What do you think about that? There, he was. It was a surgical performance, like a razor. Like a razor. And uh, Buenuelos didn't fight for more than about 10 seconds of that fight. He stood at range and got picked apart by a man twice the size. He definitely couldn't solve the puzzle, you know. Um, I think he was hesitant to get into uh, get into a, a clinch exchange just because the height, you know, would make Torres' knees and that so effective. Um, he definitely didn't want to take Torres down because uh, you have to respect that Carlson Gracie jiu-jitsu. And then on the feet, he could not close the distance, so... Well, just on a camp versus camp level, I don't think you could put the pit on par with uh, TriStar in Montreal. Definitely. It, uh, you could definitely tell that Miguel Torres was putting in the work Whereas Antonio Buñuelos may have been putting as much work in being Chuck Liddell's personal assistant. I know that requires a lot of attention. Well, and doing the exact same drills and routines for the last how many years? Well, he changed up his haircut. That's true. Not by much. Not by much. The next fight on the uh, pay-per-view portion of the card was Jake Ellenberger versus Carlos Eduardo Roca. And this was the cat whose UFC was his life? Yes, UFC was his life, and he showed it for that first round. Yeah, he fought like it was his life. Some slick grappling in that first round. Yeah, he, I thought it was over and out there for a couple minutes, but uh, but Jake Ellenberger, he's an animal. He's a tough kid. Tough kid. Tough kid. Gotta love Jake Ellenberger. I think uh, I think we'll probably see him moving up against tougher competition now. Mm, I think I'll have to see a little... I, 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 I can see them giving him another fight. Uh, another bit of a test. Another bit of a test, like uh, someone at 170, maybe a Diego Sanchez? Or well, because that, that wasn't exactly an impressive performance. You know, it was well. Is that is that indicative of people sleeping on Carlos Eduardo Roca, or is that for someone that that's one as one dimensional as that? But I mean, well, look at it like this: he had a hell of a good fight against Carlos Condit. Some people think he beat Carlos Condit. Who's at this? Or Ellenberger? Oh, okay, yeah. Ellenberger beat Mike Pyle. You know, you got to respect that. Mike Pyle is nah. tough as nails. John Howard, another guy tough as hell. And then uh, this victory too, you know, you got. It. I think I think he's ready for a step up. Oh, he's a good fighter, no doubt about it. But because I think uh, he's going to need a solid performance before he breaks into that upper echelon. He came so close. Like uh, right now, Carlos Condit is probably one win away from a title shot. You know, and after a drubbing by fucking Rory McDonald, only to win with a minute left. That wasn't Rory McDonald, was it? Rory McDonald, or what's the, who? Who's the kid from Canada? I think it's a McDonald, but I don't know. I don't know what his freaking Click name. on Condit. Yeah, beautiful internet. Gotta love that shit. Rory, Rory McDonald. McDonald. Oh, I'll never, I'll never doubt uh, DDT again. And as he drubbed him for two, two and a half rounds before succumbing to Condit via gas. But that's another thing. Is that is that indicative of people like not knowing who who uh, McDonald was going into the fight? Because all the word on the street is that that McDonald is an absolute monster. He's a terror. You know. Still a kid. Still a young guy yet, too. So, I mean, uh, th this is just uh, real indicative of how, how stacked that 170-pound division is in the UFC. And, and, and the fight with, uh, with Hardy showed nothing, really. Other than that, just the, he, could not, he beat him to the punch. He knocked him out. Showed him that he has knockout power, clearly. A nice, clean, one-punch But knockout. it was a short fight. It was a short fight and a hell of a good fight. But uh, we'll have to agree to disagree. I'd like to see Allen Berger versus somebody like uh, Diego Sanchez... Uh, maybe maybe the loser of uh, Dan Hardy. Marty Campman. Yeah, Marty Campman would be Paul Thiago. Yes, uh, yeah. But I think all those guys are maybe spoken for. I think Thiago just dropped out of a fight due to injury. That is correct. Well, didn't, uh, didn't Rumble think... drop out too? Crumble. Crumble. Did he drop out of the fight with Dan Hardy? I think so. The one in Seattle, the co-main event. That's a bummer. I think so. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, ladies and gentlemen. Moving up the car, Johnny Bones Jones taking on Ryan Darth Bader. Ah, great, great fight to watch, but, uh, you know, I had, it had, it had my jaw open, I'll tell you that. It was very one-sided. Um, way more one-sided than I ever expected it to be. Bader, Bader looked almost scared from the, from the get-go, though. He, well, not that he looked scared, but, uh, he impressed, he gave, he gave, uh, Jones too much credit. Too much respect off the bat? He needed to go in there and throw down and make it ugly, because that, has anyone ever hit Jones? Not hard, no. You know? No, I don't think I don't think he's ever been hit. But I think that's. And I think you got to push him, and I think you got to set the pace. I think that's more a case of as soon as these guys get their hands on him and. and